Welcome back to another episode of Tabletop That. Today, we're going to focus on the Seer Pool Encampment map. And specifically, we're going to look at a single Vistani tent. When looking at the Vistani tent, you'll notice that it's made up of a total of eight sections. You have this one section at the top that makes up the overhang. What we're going to focus on first is the internal structure that's made up of eight walls. And to build this out, I used one strip of foam that is two inches wide, and it's about 12 inches long. And I marked it out into two by two inch squares. And uh, to be precise, this is two inches by two inches by one inch deep. You can tell that I didn't really care about how uh, square those markings were because this is hidden by the uh, by the outside of the tent so I didn't have to be super precise here and you can look at that knife and tell that I need to get a new blade for sure once I had these cut out the next step is going to be marking out the curve in the tent walls So starting at the top, which represents the center of the tent, we go out to one of the side walls, and that's the curve we're going to go with. So let's grab all this stuff off, get that knife out of the way, and move over to the proxon. You could cut this out using a utility knife, but certainly the proxon makes this step much easier. Here I'm not being super precise either, as long as I'm getting that curve pretty close. I'm going to be happy. After I cut these out, the next step is going to be slicing these into really thin walls. And I decided at this point that I would go with 1 8 of an inch. Now on this first pass, on this first pass, you're going to notice the biggest default with a proxon, and that is that the, um, the guide arm there, it moves. So what you really have to do is reach out and anchor it with your other hand. And here we go. You see the wire starting to bend there. And that gives me a little bit more imprecise uh, cuts. I tighten it here, but on this very next pass it breaks. No biggie. I'm pretty much done anyway. Next step, glue them together. That's a pretty fast and easy step. Just taking the glue gun and I'm gluing them into the pattern of the substructure of the tent that we saw at the beginning. And this is going to be one half of the tent here. And then we'll look at a top down view and see what it looks like when you're done. So we basically have this star like pattern. And then I put a little dab right in the middle there at the end. Helps hold it together and gives a little bit of a bump to the center of the tent once you drape the, uh, the exterior cloth over it. There we go. And just fit that out. A couple more pieces in here. And we're almost done with this step. There you go, a little star pattern there. We're going to do this next one really quick and just jump ahead. Bam. And there you have it, your substructures. And that's what it looks like. And for the next step, we're just taking wet paper towel and we're going to take a total of two of them. I'm drooping one over this direction and then I'll droop a second one over top like that. So that's what it's going to look like. But before I do this, I actually have to glue them down. So I take that one off, take that one off, and I get some PVA glue or basically just Elmer's glue. Lay down a couple of lines of glue and then I lay my first damp uh, towel over top. And then what I'm going to do, you could do this one of two ways. You can split your Elmer's glue 50-50, 50 50 parts glue, 50 parts um, water, 
or you can do what I did, which is just put the glue straight on and then wet my brush down in between um, brushing it on. And I'd go back pretty often. And the other thing you want to make sure is you get all the way around the sides too, because you want this glue to harden and create the exterior of your tent. And then once I had that part done, the next step is to cut off the excess and then lay down a base. Now for base material, I ended up using chipboard that I had laying around. And you could certainly do this with just cardboard. Cereal boxes would work really well. Just use the part of a cereal box or some cardboard, heavy construction paper. Once I had it cut out, it's a simple matter of grabbing the glue gun and gluing it down. See where I made a mistake there? Here's another angle with another version of the tent I made where I cut out the flaps. You certainly could do this, but I just went with this first design for most of the tents. You're not going to see that opening anyway, uh, because once you put that uh, little porch overhang on, you can't see the, uh, you can't really see in there. Most of the time it's sitting on the uh, table anyway. People aren't picking up and looking at them. At least I don't think they will. So here you can see I use some bamboo skewers and I just measured them out, eyeballing them, measured out two posts. Those are going to go from the base up to the top of the tent. And you'll see those at the post here in a minute and then just like that. And then the cross members, which go from the tent out to the post, I cut two of those. Now I'm using scissors and these things just flew off of there, so be careful when you're doing this. Don't want to accidentally hit anybody in the eye. Now I think this is the harder way to do it, to glue it in place like that. Um, I'm gonna show you in a minute the way I did it on the second or third build. And I think it's probably gives a better result. And that's where I uh, punch a couple of holes into the, uh, the front of the tent and then anchor them in that way. Here we go. So what I did here is I just created two little holes. This is after the, the tent is dried, the glue on the outside of that uh, paper towel is dried. And it's really hard. And I cut those two cross members, shaved down the edge there to where it's a sharp, and just put them in. Then here off camera, I'm using a hot glue gun. There you go. See, I glued them in place. Then I measure those front beams, and I found this was way easier to do it this way. Measure out those front beams and then glue them into place there. And don't worry too much about the mess there you have with the glue because again, that's gonna be covered up once you get everything painted and the overhang on. And this next step, it's the same as with the cover for the tent. I just get a paper towel, wet it down, and then put it over top of the overhang. A little bit of measuring there. I'm really just eyeballing it. And again, you're gonna do two layers of this. You put down your first layer, some glue to hold it in place make sure it's damp put it on and then we're going to get some glue and a little bit of water I was really trying something this by the time this is my third one I was trying to fix some of the things that I didn't like about the first couple of tries mainly where it uh, overlaps there wanted to get a little bit to the uh, the tent body and then once I got that on uh, it's ready for a second uh, a second layer cut that out like 20 different ways before I find the shape that works and we're off and running got it wet 
Then another layer of the glue and some water on the brush and we're off and run and shape it out. And at the end of it, I think we have a pretty good looking overhang. After it's dried, um, I laid down some base coats of paint. So I tried three different styles. Uh, on the first tint, I did an espresso. On the second tint, I did a golden brown as the base coat. And on the third tint, I did brown as the base coat. At the end of the day, me personally, I think I liked the one where I used brown as a base coat and then the golden brown as a... Uh, dry brush hitting the highlights another thing that I noticed when I was doing this is I would think I got everything covered I, I even looked at it pretty well you know just looked around it and inevitably I would come back to it a little bit later get ready for the dry brush part and find that I had missed these spots there's a lot of folds in there it's uh it can throw you so with a dry brushing technique, basically what you do is you just dip your brush into the paint and then try to get a lot of the paint off by using a paper towel and just rubbing it off on the paper towel. And then when you have just a very little left, you'll come back over and go over the highlighted parts of the tent. And this is what it comes out. Looking like. So at the end of the day, we have something that looks a lot like the Vistani tent from the uh, map. There you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed that video, give us a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give us a thumbs down and let us know what you thought in the comments below. If you enjoy this content and would like to see more of it, hit the subscribe button. Until next week, have fun and keep crafting.